Oh, hi, Ezra Levant here. I'm standing in front of 10 Downing Street. That's like 24 Suskis Drive or 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's where the British Prime Minister lives, Rishi Sunak, where he lives and works. I, um, I think tonight could be his last supper here because it's a certainty that he's going to lose the election. Every poll says he will. The only question is by how much. Now, I think it would have been a bad loss normally, but with Nigel Farage coming in to the Reform Party UK, to taking away votes on the conservative or freedom-oriented right, I think Rishi Sunak is going to be devastated on both sides. And it really could be reminiscent of the disaster of Kim Campbell's 1993 loss in Canada, where she took Brian Mulroney's mighty Tories down to two seats. Just one point before I move on. I see those uh, guards behind the gate there with some pretty serious firepower. Like, those are submachine guns, if I'm using the term correctly. Most British police are unarmed, but that's the state of affairs these days with so much terrorism, and not just terrorism, but pro-Hamas activism. Just down here, you can see the Cenotaph, a memorial to the British war dead. And, in fact, all along this street are other memorials uh, of a military or veteran uh, nature. And th those are often not attacked, but defaced or um, beset by pro-Hamas thugs. If you think the pro-Hamas marches in Canada are bad, you've never seen them here in the UK. You might recall that Alexa Lavoie came out once. I came out a couple of times. No baloney. They have up to 100,000 people on the street chanting not just against Israel, but against the West. You'll see a sea of flags, not a Union Jack amongst them. So today it's a, you know, it's a, it's a normal day, but normal in the UK is a state of alert for jihadists. Um, every once in a while there's another terrorist attack, but it's not just those acute events. It's the unrelenting growth of Islamist immigration that simply is not assimilating or integrating into British culture. And that's one of the things that Nigel Farage has talked about. Let me give you one last anecdote before I move on. The campaign for this British election started around D-Day, June 6th, which is the anniversary of the great seaborne invasion to liberate Europe from the Nazis in 1944. And leaders from all around the world came. The British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak came and he, had, he went through the motions, but he left early. He left early and flew back to London for some run-of-the-mill TV interview that he actually scheduled. It was clear he didn't give a damn, whereas Nigel Farage, who wasn't even an elected official, went in his personal capacity to Normandy to take part in the ceremonies. And Nigel Farage came back and he bluntly said it. Rishi Sunak is not patriotic. It, w it caused a scandal to the regime journalists who heard it, but can you deny it's true? Here's how that went. Well, if he doesn't understand how vitally important D-Day is in terms of our country, its history, it is one of our top ever achievements. And it's something that runs right through the generations in this country, that we did something truly remarkable. It's at the edge of living memory. This was the last time ever there'll be a gathering of veterans on parade in Normandy. And if he's not prepared to go to the international commemoration with the heads of so many different countries, overlooking a beach in which our American allies lost thousands of men, that says a lot about him. He is completely disconnected from the centre of this country. And he's proved to me that he basically is not a patriotic leader of the Conservative Party. That's what I like about Nigel Farage. He just bluntly states things that makes the regime media apoplectic. And when they say, do you mean to say that Rishi Sunak is unpatriotic? Nigel Farage says, yeah. I meant to say it, and I did. It's such a refreshing approach to de dealing with journalists. I see a little bit of that in Pierre Polyev, too. Anyways, let's keep going down the street.